everyone, Kelly here, and today I just want to do a kind of chatty video where I want to talk about how I reorganized my bookshelf and all my book storage this year to focus on my goals. And my goals are to, one, read books off my shelf, books that I already own, and two, to finish some series that I started during Book Miss. I did a video where I talked about all the series I started in 2020. And then I did another video where I talked about all the series that I had started prior to 2020. So like in 2018, 2019, and then didn't continue any of those books in 2020. So I am behind on a lot of series. And I also own a lot of books that I haven't read. And so instead of like giving myself a book ban, buying ban, I kind of wanted to just help myself out to focus on certain things on my bookshelf to read them more. And so I reorganized my shelves and my book storage in order to accomplish those goals. So I just wanted to chat about that, kind of give you almost like a mini bookshelf tour. And also I wanted to show you specifically what books I haven't read on these like bottom three shelves. And you guys can let me know in the comments which ones you want me to prioritize. And I'll tell you what is special about these books. So. Um, first, I want to chat a little bit about how I organized it. I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment showing you the top shelves so you can see how I did those. And I'll insert that clip in here so you can kind of just look at what the top of my bookshelf looks like since you never see it in my videos. So the top two shelves on my bookcase are all series. So the top shelf are series that I have finished. And then my second shelf is series that I am in the middle of reading. So on this shelf is where I keep the books that I've already read in the series. And then all the ones I still need to read are on my TBR cart. And that's just helping me to remember where I'm at in the series. The only exception to this is you'll see all four books in the Song of the Lioness series by Tamara Pierce. And that's just because I'm keeping all of my books by Tamara Pierce together. And so they are sitting right next to the first book in the Immortals Quartet and then all the rest of those books. And then all the other Tamara Pierce I, books I haven't read yet are over on my TBR cart. And then as I finish them, they will be added to the second shelf. So this is the middle shelf on my bookcase, the third shelf down right after the series. So this one has books that I have already read on the left hand side. These are books that I really loved and think I'll reread someday. And then on the other half are my collectible editions. So my Barnes and Nobles children's classics and some other collectible editions that just look a little fancier on the right hand side. All right, so you saw in that clip that my second shelf down has series that I have started but not finished. And so what I have done with that is I only have put on this shelf books that I had already finished on that second shelf. And then all of the books that I haven't finished in those series, I have put over on my TBR cart. And I'm gonna insert a picture now while I'm chatting of all of those books that are in series that I am currently in the middle of that I want to finish. And I would like to finish as many of these as possible this year. So the second and third shelf on my TBR cart are those series. You might notice in this picture that not all books in a series are next to each other because how I organized the cart was the second shelf are all the next books in the series that I have to read. And then the bottom one, they're shoved back farther because those are the ones later on in the series. So I really want to focus on that middle shelf. Those are the books that I need to read next to continue each of the series. And then back to this shelf. So what I did was then after dealing with the series that I want to continue on putting all those series on my TBR cart, I only put books on these bottom shelves that were standalones. So then what I did after I kind of separated my series out so I know which books I have to read in those series and they could be like really like right front and center on my TBR cart for me to know I need to continue those. Then what I did was that I went through the rest of my books and I took out anything that was a series beginner. So I'm going to insert a picture right now while I'm chatting about all the books that I have that are the beginning of series, or maybe I own some that are the middle of a series. And I took all those and I put them in my closet. And the reason I put them in my closet was that I wanted them out of my sight so they wouldn't be the first things that drew me in. If I really want to start one of these series this year, I'm not going to like scold myself for that, but I'm not going to want to reach for those first. I really want to focus on 
the series I've already started or my standalones. So that's why I put them in my closet and you'll see I have quite a lot of them. Um, the books behind the piles you see are books I've already read. So it's just the ones that you can actually see the visible spines. Those are all the series beginners or series full series I own or whatever that I haven't started yet. So then back to these bottom three shelves that I have on my main bookcase. I after I took all those series beginners and I have you know all the series I've started somewhere else, these are all standalones that I would like to read. And obviously I'm not gonna read all of these this year. These are also do not include any middle grade books. I keep my middle grade books up on my kids shelves. And the way I organize these is by genre. So what I want to do right now is actually pull off each shelf and show you the books real quick. And I'm going to just do I'm not going to do it like where some people do where they focus in on the shelf and pull out one because I feel like that would be hard in editing. And I just don't have time to edit a video like that. So I'm just going to stand here and hold them one at a time, say the title and show you each of them. And then I would like you to tell me down below which of these standalones you would really like me to get to this year. Because I would like to read probably a third of these books this year. That will make me feel satisfied of like getting one whole shelf because that would be like one whole shelf is completely open and then I would have more place to put books that I've already read and loved because right now as you saw in that clip earlier the only place that I have displayed books I've already read is this middle shelf and I only even have half of a shelf space so I would love to read a third of these books to have more space to show off books I really love and books that I might want to reread someday so, all right, let's just start going through each shelf. So I have these sorted by genre. So the first ones I pulled off were my classics. And I know the classics have genres of their own, but I just kind of sort out most of the classics separately, except for you'll see in a little bit, I have some classics and with other genres, genres, and I'll explain that later. So these are just classics that I have. So I have Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway, Far From the Madding Crowd by Tom Hardy, Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers, Anna Karenina by Leah Tolstoy, and East of Eden by John Steinbeck. And then the only other one that I'm not sure whether it's a classic or a contemporary because it's written in the 60s, seems like a fine line. I have Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. So then the rest of that shelf are contemporaries and I kind of loosely separated these by YA versus adults. So let's start with the YA. So I have The Loose Ends List by Carrie Firestone, A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard, The Truth Commission by Susie and Junby, Juby, The Season of You and Me by Robin Constantine, Under a Dancing Star by Laura Wood, I'll Give You The Sun by Jandy Nelson, Written in the Stars by Aisha Saeed, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills, The Names They give, Gave Us by Emery Lord, and The Atomical Shape of the Heart by Jen Bennett, and then the adult titles, Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center, Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe by Heather Weber, The Optimist Guide to Letting Go by Amy Reichert, The Unseen World by Liz Moore, The Reckless Oath We Made by Bren Greenwood, A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman, and My Name is Leon by Kit DeWall. And I just want to mention real quick because I noticed that there are some missing and the reason that there are some missing is I pulled out anything I'm going to be doing for my like try a chapter on haul edition since I'm not sure I'm going to keep those books. I have pulled those out already so if you see those show up in those videos later that's why they're not on my shelves currently. And then on to the next shelf and this one the first half or the left hand half is all my gothic fiction and that's where I was saying earlier that some of these are classics, some are horror, some are thrillers, some are mysteries, some are ghost stories, you know there's a lot of different genres but I just decided to keep all my gothic fiction together because that's one of my things I really want to focus on this year is reading more gothic fiction and you will have seen a lot of these also when I did my gothic fiction haul back in like November so let's go through all of the gothic books or things that I'm considering gothic fiction 
but they would fit into other genres as well. So I have Lost Among the Living by Simone St. James, Black Rabbit Hall by Eve Chase, The Forgotten Garden by Kate Morton, The Dead Secret by Wilkie Collins, In the Shadow of Blackbirds by Kat Winters, White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgerstern, Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, Mr. Flood's Last Resort by Jess Kidd, The Widow, Widow of Rose Hall by Diana Biller, My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler, Mary Riley by Valerie Martin, The Uninvited by Kat Winters, The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon, and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. So then on the other half of that shelf, I have speculative fiction. I'm just putting it all together because some of these are sci-fi, some are fantasy, some have magical realism or just a little bit of like fantastical elements. So I just put them all together on that side. I will mention one first that is part of a series, but I definitely want to read it because it was given to me for review. And that is Phased by Victoria Tekken. Um, she's a independent author and she gave me this book for review. And right now there are no other books in the series out, but she said she will be making it a series. But I just really want to read this probably in the next couple months. So I kept it out of the closet because I want to get to books that are given to me for review. The rest of these are standalones. When the Moon Was Ours by Anna Marie Mecklemore and The Weight of Feathers also by Anna Marie Mecklemore. We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. A Million Things by Emily Henry. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Glory O'Brien's History of the Future by A.S. King. Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. All Are Wrong Todays by Elon Mustai. Battle Royale by Kashun Takami, The Humans by Matt Haig, and The Radleys by Matt Haig, and lastly Invictus by Ryan Groudon. And now we're on to the bottom shelf. On the left hand side of my bottom shelf I have nonfiction. So I have The Girl with Seven Names, Escape from North Korea by Han Seo Lee, The Lightless Sky, A Twelve Year Old's Refugees, Extraordinary Journey Across Half the World by Gowali Pasarle, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sklute, Dreams from My Father by Barack Obama, In a Sunburnt Country by Bill Bryson, The Color of Water, A Black Man's Tribute to His White Mother by James McBride, Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder by Richard Louvre, Stamped from the Beginning, The Definitive History of Racist Ideas in America by Ibram X. Kendi, Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow, Leonardo da Vinci by Walter Isaacson, the Weekend Homesteader, A 12-Month Guide to Self-Sufficiency by Anna Hess, and then Audrey Hepburn, An Elegant Spirit by her son, Sean Hepburn Ferrer. And then on the middle of the bottom shelf, I have some historical fiction. I, Eliza Hamilton by Susan Holloway Scott, Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys, also Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys, Homegoing by Ya Gyasi, Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate, the Color of Our Sky by Amida Trossi, Americano by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, A Thousand Splendid Suns by Khaled Hassani, and then also The Kite Ran Runner by Khaled Hassani. And then lastly, all the way on the right on the bottom shelf, I have thrillers. Though this first one's actually probably speculative fiction, I just didn't have room on the second shelf. And that's The Green Mile by Stephen King. And then The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina, Burn Town by Jennifer McBahorn, out by Natsuo Kirino, Master of the Game by Sydney Sheldon, The Secret She Keeps by Michael Robotham, Room by Emma Donahue, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty, and The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. And whew, that is all of the standalone books that are YA and adult that I own. So like I said at the beginning, I would really like to at least read a third of those books that I just mentioned, all these standalones. If I read more than that, that would be great. But since I'm also focusing on finishing series, I don't know if more than a third is really like possible this year. So that's why I'm asking your advice. Tell me which of these books you want me to prioritize. And then after like people have had time to comment and all that, I'll probably put out a video in the next couple of weeks saying like, 
the 21 books I'm going to read in 2021, where I talk about the ones that you picked for me that you would really like me to prioritize. And then if I make a list of them, that gives me even more incentive to make sure I get to those 21 books. And if I read 21 books, that might actually take out a whole shelf. I'm not for sure, but it will at least get me very close to that goal. So yeah, let me know down below if there's anything that you really want me to get to right away. If you want to buddy read any of the ones that I mentioned, any of these standalones, I love to buddy read. I can do it on Voxer or Instagram or whatever. And I just really enjoy doing that. So that would be fun as well. If you own some of these that you've also had sitting on your shelf for a long time, let me know down in the comments and we can set up a schedule to buddy read it. And that's it for me. I would love to hear from you down below and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.